Hi everyone! In this video, we will look at the mathematics behind the principal component analysis. As a reminder, the principal component analysis, or PCA, is a statistical technique to reduce the dimension of a dataset while preserving as much information as possible. It does that by maximizing the percentage of total variance, which is explained with new uncorrelated variables, the principal components, which are linear combinations of the initial variables. The p-first principal components explain most of the variance in our dataset. We will show that the first principal axes, or coordinates, through the initial variables are nothing else than the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix with the highest eigenvalues and that the sum of the corresponding eigenvalues determine the variance explained by the first principal components. Let's consider a dataset X with n elements. We assume that the variables are centered with zero mean. The first principal component is a linear combination of the initial variables. The vector of weight or principal axis is a unit vector with a magnitude of 1. The first principal component maximizes the variance explained, so the weights W are the solution of this maximization problem. With omega the empirical covariance matrix, the spectral decomposition of omega will help us to solve the problem. The covariance matrix omega is symmetric. It can be decomposed as a product of P, lambda on the transpose of P, with P the matrix containing the eigenvectors of omega as columns. Pi is an autonomous basis, they are unit vectors, and the correlation of Pi and Pj is equal to zero when i is different from j. The product of P and its transpose is then equal to the identity matrix. The matrix lambda is composed of the corresponding eigenvalues of omega in the diagonal and zero elsewhere. We assume that the eigenvalues are sorted by decreasing order. So we have the product of omega and pi, which is equal to lambda i times pi. So in matrix form, omega p is equal to p times lambda, and by multiplying by the transpose of p on the right side, and using the fact that p times its transpose is equal to the identity matrix, we get the spectral decomposition of omega. Going back to our maximization problem and replacing with the spectral decomposition of omega, we can rewrite the problem as following. Pi is an autonomous basis and the vector of weights is an unit vector, so we can derive this equality. And since the eigenvalues are ranked by decreasing order, we easily see that having the first term equal to 1 and the other ones equal to 0 gives the maximum variance. So W1 is equal to P1, the first principal axis is the eigenvector with the highest eigenvalue, and the eigenvalue gives the variance explained by the first component. Similarly, the KTH principal axis is a KTH eigenvector with a KTH eigenvalue. So finding the first principal components is equivalent to finding the eigenvectors with the highest eigenvalues. An eigenvector P and the corresponding eigenvalue lambda must satisfy the following equation, which is equivalent to this expression. So omega minus lambda times the identity matrix I is a singular matrix. Its determinant is equal to zero. So we have to find the roots of the characteristic polynomial, this is the eigenvalues, and for each eigenvalue, there will be an eigenvector which satisfies the equation. Here is an example with n equal to. We consider the following covariance matrix omega. The determinant of omega minus lambda times i is equal to zero. So we have to solve this second order polynomial equation to get the two eigenvalues. Lambda 1 
and lambda 2 are the two solutions. They are the two eigenvalues of omega. Now we have to find the two eigenvectors. The first eigenvector must satisfy this equation. So we easily get that v1 is proportional to the vector with 1 as first coordinate and minus 3 plus lambda 1 as second coordinate. And so we get the first unit eigenvector p1. And similarly, we get the second one p2. For higher dimension problems, the principal components are in general computed by eigenvalue decomposition on the covariance matrix using algorithms such as the QR method, which decomposes the covariance matrix as a product of an orthogonal matrix and an upper triangular matrix to determine the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Principal components can also be computed by singular value decomposition, or SVD, on the dataset matrix X, which is a decomposition of X as a product of three matrices containing eigenvectors and square root of eigenvalues of the product of the transpose of X and X. In programming languages such as R or Python, it takes only a few lines to obtain the eigen decomposition of a matrix. For example, with the Python library NumPy, we can easily solve our previous two-dimensional problem. We enter the covariance matrix, the total variance of our dataset is 5, and we calculate with one line the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. We print the eigenvalues. You can check that we get the same values as the one calculated before when solving the second order polynomial equation. The first factor explains close to 70% of the total variance. Then we print the two eigenvectors. We can see that in our example, the first principal component has more weight on the first variable which has the highest variance. We can also obtain the principal components and the explained variants directly from the dataset. We simulate here two dimensional Gaussian variables from the covariance matrix. Compared to before, you can see that eigenvalues and eigenvectors are a bit different because principal components are directly estimated from simulated variables. Let's say a few words now on single value decomposition, which gives another good explanation of the principal component analysis. Let's define u as the product of the dataset x, the principal component axis p, and the square root of the inverse of the eigenvalue diagonal matrix. Each column of u is proportional to one of the principal components, x times p being the matrix with principal components as columns. Actually, u regroups standardized principal components, the covariance of the ui being equal to the identity matrix. We have x which is equal to the product of u, the square root of lambda and the transpose of p. To demonstrate that, we replace u by its expression and we use, again, the fact that pi is an orthonormal basis. It can be rewritten as following with two unitary matrices. This is the so-called singular value decomposition of x. The first matrix is proportional to the standardized principal components. The second one is a diagonal matrix with the square root of the variance explained and the third one contains the principal axes as lines. Another interesting result is that the covariance vector between the data and one of the principal components is proportional to the corresponding principal component axis, the proportionality factor being the corresponding eigenvalue. The loading matrix L is a matrix containing the covariance between the data and the standardized principal components. It is equal to the product of the matrix P containing the principal axis and the square root of the matrix lambda with the corresponding variance explained as diagonal. Thank you for your time.